Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris, thank you so much for joining me. This video is gonna be a nice little simple one. I've gotten, if you look here in the background, I got a new lathe, all right? That's the old one, that's the Harbor Freight variety. I got a Rikon variable speed lathe and we're gonna make a couple of projects on it. One being something real simple, like a pen. Made this last night, absolutely love it. Turns out the colors and the ironwood look great together. Also, I've got this piece of Paduk, 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 Paduk. And uh, it has a very nice orangey, fiery tinge to it. And, um, you know, I'm going to cut it up and put some epoxy in it. And it's going to be the handle to a pizza wheel. So these are two little projects you can do. Not only are they great for gift giving, but they're also great just to have in the house. When people say, hey, let me cut the pizza and you bust this thing out. They go, what? this is awesome. At least I hope it's going to be. Come join me. Let's go. All right, jumping right into this, we're gonna go straight to the crosscut slit on the table saw. The blade is raised up by about an inch and a quarter. The piece is roughly about two inches thick. Keeping my hands away from this blade, we're gonna definitely make random pattern cuts all through it. You can see it gives me kind of a mosaic pattern. And then the idea here is to fill it with epoxy resin. And but before I do that, I'm gonna use some house wrap tape and kind of tape it up, making sure there's no leaks. And I figured I would put some Baltic birch plywood on the edges as well and then tape that up for a little extra insurance. The idea here is, is to take some of this Total Boats two to one high performance epoxy. We're gonna make it a color called Pure White by Black Diamond Pigments. And by the way, if you're interested in Total Boat epoxy and trying to get into this whole resin thing, I've got a coupon code called Glimpse In. Use it at checkout at totalboat.com. Everything is in the description. Go check it out. It's definitely, definitely worth your time to get into this medium and it's, it's actually pretty fun to use. So with the larger piece sitting there to dry, I've taken a single kerf cut on two smaller pieces of Paduk. We're gonna tape these up, making sure that there are no leaks as well and we're gonna pour that same white epoxy right inside. These are gonna be made for a writing pen here in just in a little bit. With the pieces finally done, they're cured, ready to go. We're gonna trim these up on the table saw, we're gonna put them on the lathe and we're gonna turn them into something. All right, so let's do that now. All right, with the pieces finally cured overnight, I'm just gonna cut these here at the table saw. I'm gonna trim up some of the rough edges and I'm gonna put them 90 degrees to the blade and make sure that both ends are square on both the large piece and the smaller ones as well. So to drill these holes exactly in the perfect spot, I'm using one of these screw clamps with a couple of 90 degree notches taken out of it to go ahead and drill the hole into these pin blanks. You can see here, it goes pretty well actually. And uh, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble what I'm doing. It's not really a pen, I'm making a mechanical pencil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that the pieces are just long enough for the brass collars to go in. We're gonna rough these up with a little bit of sandpaper, 150 to kind of get them, get them a nice tooth feel. That way the CA glue we're gonna use, of course, Starbond, is going to have something to grab hold to when we put these pieces in. You're gonna see this process right here. I'm simply gonna flood the surface up with a little bit of thick CA glue. I shove it in place and use a corner of a piece of wood to make sure that it doesn't protrude out either side. Again, here it is again. You simply just spin it around, plop it in, use that corner like I was talking about, place it in there and then give it a little activator. And I also have a coupon code for them as well. Go down there in the description, you can save 10%. Go to starbond.com, use code GLIMPS10 for that one as well. So they make a special tool you chuck up in a drill to trim the wood exactly to the level of that brass collar in there. I don't have that tool, so I use my disc sander and I just to make sure I'm very careful that once the brass collar reaches the same level of the wood, I'm good to go. Then I take a reamer and ream out any old adhesive that may be in the sink. So you can see, we still got a lot of material in and around this brass collar. Now you could take all this off on the lathe if you want. However, we're gonna do a little bit better, I think. I'm gonna trim a lot of this off on the table saw. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect or 90 degree or square or anything like that. It just has to be gone. That way we have less material to take off at the lathe. So let's trim these up now. So I'm comfortable using this crosscut sled and even cutting smaller pieces, I'm fine with it. However, if you're not, then don't. Then trim this up on the lathe or trim it up at a bandsaw. It's really not necessary to even trim these up, but I just like taking less material off here at the lathe. All right, to start making the pen, we're gonna load up a pen mandrel inside the lathe. We're gonna put on a few bushings, put on those pieces of wood, and then we're gonna tighten it all down. Once we introduce the tailstock into the mandrel, we're good to go. 
Now, here's how this works. You basically just start whittling away. I'm using the easy wood tools, the uh, carbide tip tools. I like these, I'm, I'm a novice turner. I'm not the best wood turner on the planet. So I like the ease of use of these. And as you can see, it makes pretty quick work of getting this pin blanks down to a nice reasonable size. I do want to stress here, you want to take your time. You don't want to just start going willy nilly with this. You don't want to go crazy. Get them down to a reasonable size and then make your way to the sanding process. I go from 150 grit up to 400. And as I'm doing this, a bit of an accident happened. I completely forgot that when you're turning resin, anything resin related on a lathe, you gotta be careful of friction. I overheated the right hand side pin blank and it's not the resin's fault, it's completely my fault. So, you know what, back to the drawing board, I've got a simple piece of wood and maybe we're just gonna make this mechanical pencil with one piece that has resin and one piece that doesn't. That's just what we're gonna go with. So, you know what, like I said, there's always mistakes in woodworking and this was one that I completely forgot. So while you're turning resin, please remember, go slow in the sanding process, really eliminate that friction and you won't make the same mistake I did. So once I have these sanded down to over 400 grit, I take a little bit of beeswax and I shove it in there while it's spinning. And then I take a paper towel and I use the friction heat. This is the heat that you want. It's okay this time, it's not gonna ruin it. But it really embeds that beeswax into the surface. I typically like a nice matte finish and this gives a beautiful finish and it's really nice to touch as well. So I'm using a simple, well, it's, it's not that simple, but I think it is, it was pretty, pretty neat to make. This is a pin press, if you see it over there. It's made of Baltic birch and it's got a little clamp in there. And basically, I'm gonna show you how to put this together. Uh, and I don't do a very good job at showing you how this tool works because, well, I got my arm in the way every time the pin is being made, or the pencil is being made. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna assemble this, I'm gonna show it to you, and I'm gonna show you a little bit different how this, a little different angle on how this pin press works. But look at that, pretty cool little design. But check this out. This is one of the coolest projects I think I've ever made on the lathe. I didn't film me turning it, but I am gonna film me showing you how this pin press works. You can take the blocks and move them around depending on the size of the piece you need to push in there. However, these are gonna be darts. And what you're looking at here is me taking some lead thread and I'm putting it and pushing it into the actual hollow cavity that's gonna give the dart some more weight Therefore, it's an accurate throwability, if that's even a word. These kits to make darts on the lathe are from Rockler, and I definitely gotta give Rockler a huge shout out for this video. They have provided me with all the hardware for these darts, for the pencils, and also for the next project you're gonna see. It's pretty dang cool. It's a really awesome, elegant pizza cutter. And Rockler, again, thank you so much for providing me all the hardware for this stuff. I'm gonna link them down below, rockler.com, check them out. But look at these darts, man. Everybody that comes over and sees these are like, you made these? And it's really, really a cool conversation piece. And it kind of pays homage to how, actually my wife and I started our relationship. We actually used to play darts quite a bit and uh, it was fun doing this. And I'm definitely gonna drag her back out to the scene and we're gonna, we're gonna throw a few darts, absolutely. But check that out, I love it. And thank you, Rockler. All right, enough of this. <laughs> we'll get into the pizza cutter now. But only after I show you another pin that I made off camera. I'm just in a lathe phase right now, but yeah, here we go. So we've got the piece that we're gonna use for the, make the handle with the pizza cutter. And I'm basically finding the center of it by you know tracing out the diagonals, poking a hole with the ice pick, setting my table saw to 45 degrees, because again, I don't wanna have so much material on this piece to take off at the lathe. I'm just gonna ease these edges. You're gonna see here, it's gonna, gonna give me kind of like octagonal shape and this is gonna be a lot easier to start trimming down on the lathe. So here's how this is gonna work. I've got a screw chuck, that's what that's called, believe it or not. We're gonna screw that in, in one of the holes that's in the dead center, and then the other center is gonna be held in support with the tailstock, and we're just gonna, gonna make a pizza handle. There's no rhyme or reason to this. I basically just wanna make sure that I use a, uh, some type of measurement. I have a pair of calipers here that I'm gonna transfer that measurement on to one side of this handle, and that's gonna be the handle that screws into the actual pizza wheel. And the other side is gonna taper upward and be a little bit thicker on one end uh, to kind of give you, you know, I guess a little bit more of a, a handle hold on what you're doing. Cause you know, the pizza's not gonna cut itself, right? I mean, I don't think it is. And this is really gonna help you achieve that goal once it comes out of the oven. So check this out. So once it stops spinning, I realize it kind of reminds me of Eddie Van Halen's guitar a little bit. I'm not sure if you guys see that or if you recognize that, but let me know in the comments if you get what I'm saying. So after making my way up through the grits of sandpaper ending on 400, 
I've then taken the tailstock away and I'm gonna take a small little saw here while the lathe is spinning. I'm gonna trim off the edge and then I'm gonna sand it flush, giving it a nice smooth feel. At this point, I'm gonna put some mineral spirits all over it to kind of get all that dust off. And then I'm gonna make sure it dries up a little bit with a paper towel and now it's time to apply some finish. This time I'm using a CA glue. I'm using Starbond's thin CA glue. I introduce it to a little bit of a paper towel and we put it on and we spray a little activator on it and then lather, rinse, repeat. I like to burnish it as well with a little bit of the shavings that come off. It's kind of like, I don't know, 2,000, 3,000 grit sandpaper. Its own shavings help it kind of break the edges of this finish. And I repeat this process probably five to six, maybe seven times. And when it's all said and done, this CA glue finish puts a really nice sheen and it looks real professional. And as you can see here, it looks pretty good. So taking a simple parting tool, and I'm going to part this down almost to the screw. Again, we gotta be mindful, there is a screw in there and I don't wanna go too crazy here because I'll burn right through it and we'll ruin some things. Once it gets to that point, we take it off the chuck and now I trim it off with the bandsaw and I'm very careful here to go ahead and hold this at 90 degrees and we're gonna trim it off here at the disc sander. So because I don't have a chuck in my lathe tailstock, well, I just don't have that accessory, I'm gonna drill this out by hand. And I wanted to show you this as well, that this could be a bit daunting. You might think drilling this out by hand, it might be tough to do. Well, you just gotta take your time. So go incrementally through your drill bits, one after the next. And they recommend, depending on the hardness or softness of the wood, ending at either 7 16 or 1 half inch. And what you're gonna see here is me trying the 7 16 inch bit. And I've got a threaded collar here. I'm really not sure that I don't have that hole drilled exactly thick enough because I feel like there's too much resistance as I'm tightening in that, that threaded collar. It, it, again, I'm still having that resistance. So I'm gonna really work my way up to the half inch bit, being very careful not to go offline. And then I put that threaded collar back in and it's it feels good. But I'm gonna take it out real quick and I'm gonna put some CA glue on it to kind of give it a little bit more of a sturdy hold and then simply just screw it back in. And then we're gonna put this thing together. Check out how this thing looks. All right now, so moment of truth here. We're gonna join these two together and see how this goes. I swear I know what I'm doing. I promise you guys. Um. <laughs> there it goes. Oh uh, yeah, first time joining them up. Now oh, that's pretty cool. That is pretty, pretty cool, if you ask me. And it even worked out that the, the side that didn't have the epoxy just landed on the bottom. Now, I, it's a little off center. I guess I could undo it and seat the, uh, the actual nut in there a little bit further and it would allow this to position wherever you wanted it. But this is, this is fantastic. Hmm, I'm impressed. <laughs> all right, here they are guys in their glory. And I want to definitely thank Rockler again for providing me with all the hardware to make this happen. And really just to show you guys that, you know, I'm not the best turner on the planet. And if you have a small lathe and introductory lathe, projects like this are well within your reach. So go to rockler.com and check out this stuff. But guys, thank you so much for joining me. As always, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe to the channel and of course do this. <laughs> oh yeah, you know it. And you know, these, these projects, they're, they're absolutely stunning, they're beautiful. And I am not the most proficient wood turner on that lathe, I'll tell you that right now. But with the proper hardware and a little bit of patience, you can make some really beautiful items. Again, I wanna thank Total Boat and Rockler for both helping me with this video. And again, I wanna thank you as well for joining me and your viewership really is enough for me. Uh, but if you like what we're doing here and you wanna support this channel a little bit further, I do have a Patreon campaign. I'm gonna link it down below. And of course there are various tiers on there and there's various gifts that you can receive. And uh, also I like to do something for the guys and girls that support me over the holiday season as well. So if you're already a member of the Patreon tribe down below, be on the lookout for in the mail in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully it gets there before Christmas. I've got a little something for you. Guys, thank you for joining me. My name is Chris. This has been A Glimpse Inside. I really hope you enjoyed making these projects with me and we'll see you on that next project. Take care.